Uh, my name is Yahaya Maikori. Uh, it's indeed my pleasure to speak on regulating esports. Can we balance government and private interests? Um, of course, uh, I mean, like we're all aware, for those who are in the industry, uh, the growth of esports, especially during the COVID pandemic, has, uh, has basically brought more attention, focus, in terms of uh, what the potentials are for people in the industry. Uh, esports, of course, uh, of, the, of about 22% of internet users uh, in Europe and, and, and United States were estimated to be esports fans or lovers or players. So obviously, esports has come to stay. Uh, we think, and I think, and I'm sure everybody believes that esports has been tipped over uh, because of the absence of live sports. And that's brought considerable focus on what the potentials for esports are. Uh, again, just to harness or to underscore what, uh, the, the importance of the industry, the uh, National the Olympic Committee has for a while continued to consider whether esports can form part and parcel of the next Olympics. Well, that has not been, uh, while the jury is still out on what's going to happen with esports during the next Olympics, what's pretty clear is that esports has come to stay and um, it's widespread. And of course, because it's not a really a physical event, we have most likely more event, more, more participants or more people engage in the ecosystem than previously. So esports, we know that it's in its uh, infancy and we also know that very, very few countries have gotten it right. And even for those countries which are on the right path, there's still lots of loose ends that need to be sorted out for us to get esports into a place whereby it becomes a valuable commercial industry. Um, so let's look at Africa, of course. Africa, esports have become a buzzword, primarily one because of how most of the punters of the gambling industry have had to rely on esports as um, a basis for getting involved with their sports books. And of course, now the focus has inevitably uh, come to the fore. So how do we regulate esports? And what's about regulating esports? Uh, probably we might need to look at one or two countries and see how they've regulated esports so far to give us some kind of idea or some kind of direction of how esports should go get into. Uh, but let me just also add quickly that, like any other industry, it has always primarily been the duty of government, first of all, to send clear, strong signals to people about what you want to do with a particular industry. One. Secondly, come up with a policy. Thirdly, laws. And fourthly, sometimes create the enabling environment. And I think that is what we need to focus on, to see what the key roles of both parties are. So traditionally, the private sector depends on what the body language of the government is to determine how it engages across the whole value chain. Uh, in Africa, while there are lots of associations and there are lots of other interest groups, uh, we cannot really say that there has been much of progress in that space. Of course, uh, unless of course you, 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 you can always exclude uh, South Africa. Uh, while we don't have too much details on that, we can look at what has happened elsewhere and see how we can basically delineate the role of both parties. I think um, in terms of looking at the gold standard for regulation of esports, we can look at South, Africa, South, South Korea. Uh, that time and time again has become the reference point for many people in the industry. And let's see how government play their own role and also see how the, uh, the private sector has played its own role. But more importantly, we think that we know that in Asia, Asia has the, probably the biggest esports market, uh, globally speaking, uh, next close, uh, followed closely by the uh, United States of America. But let's look at regulation and how South Korea was able to succeed in that. First of all, we have to look at broadband policy. Because you know, for you to be able to scale up esports, important uh, infrastructure for any kind of industry to grow or thrive. Now, if you look at South Korea and look at Africa and look at what the infrastructural uh, facilities um, in terms of broadband is, there is no comparison. Up until two, three years ago, we know that South Korea had probably the fastest 
internet speed, globally speaking. Why right now that is questionable? One thing is certain, that broadband network policy set the tone for a very, very vibrant esports industry. So first things first, the most critical infrastructure for us to get esports uh, going, for, to even invite the private sector, is to have a broadband policy and to implement that. That's one. Uh, in some countries, of course, where they have 3G, or talking of 4G, some countries have already moved to 5G. Uh, in the US, they use 4G, and they still have an effective uh, esports uh, uh, industry running there. So uh, that's the first thing they do. The next thing we, we look at is to stop the proliferation of too many bodies. Even the Global Esports Federation, there are several bodies. There's West Coast, there are so many internet bodies, I mean, esports bodies. Unlike football, which is known for FIFA, as the one global responsible body for football, we have a multiplicity of so many uh, bodies it's trying to regulate or to harness the esports industry in even in given set of in, in, in even given jurisdiction. So in South, in South Korea, what the Ministry of Youth and Sports did was basically to set up uh, esports association. And that esports association is very important in trying to rally down the industry, bring down the ecosystem relate with international bodies, as well as set up some basic guidelines that help dictate how esports is run in South Korea. I think that's the second major thing. Beyond having a broadband policy, the next thing is to ensure that the government, by way of body language, speaks positively about opportunities and how it intends to push esports in that country. South Korea did that very easily by creating the South Korean Esports Association which has helped rally down the whole industry. Uh, in Nigeria back three months ago, the minister also made a positive statement like that. And that is how the industry is going to grow. We can compare what's happening in South, Africa, South Korea to India. In India, for example, there are several bodies, that's one. And so the Ministry of Youth and Sports there does not recognize anybody. And that brings confusion. Uh, inability for stakeholders to come together to create a common platform to articulate what their needs are for the growth of the industry. Another thing that uh, the, the, the government is also important for is also looking at some of the rules or the laws or regulation. For example, in South Korea, a couple of uh, malpractices have been made criminal, they become criminalized right now. For example, uh, match fixing in esports is criminalized, identity theft or impersonation has become criminalized. And of course, with that kind of law in place, it's, uh, people are able to enforce um, some of the malpractices or enforce against those people who uh, are involved in any kind of malpractice. And because we know that this is a multi-million dollar in, uh, industry and the integrity of the game is important. But another thing which the association or the federation, and of course, whatever body you call it, whatever name you call the body by, can help do is create a set of standards. For example, in South Korea, you know that there's a minimum uh, contract term and there's a maximum. There's a minimum fee payable. They're recognized as athletes. Uh, they have also the benefits in terms of immigration of athletes. Uh, again, what they also have is they're able to engage with international bodies. Again, another thing they've done is to create what they call the South Korean Cup, which is like the ultimate cup for all those involved in esports. Uh, so these are some of the things that a single government initiative or intervention can help uh, with the development of esports. So uh, if you look at like, the, we, 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 we compared it with the Indian uh, Esports Federation, and we can see that it's actually in a state of disarray. And that's what we need to look at in Africa how, first of all, is to recognize esports as an industry that has come to stay with us. It's not going to leave. And what we expect from government is for them to send a strong signal about what the potentials are. Secondly, is to be able to, do, to map the industry, to understand what the opportunities are in terms of tournaments, events, teams, sponsorship, uh, in terms of game development, in terms of animation, and all whatnot. Um, these are the kind of initiatives we expect government to do. And we are very clear that once government has that in place, then the next thing you can see is that the private sector is going to rally around. And basically, because any investor or anybody in any industry, what they really require is some kind of certainty, direction, 
an affirmation as to what to do in the future. With those kind of initiatives, you are going to see the private sector rally around, initiate teams. Some are going to go into game, uh, into creating hubs. Some will build uh, stadiums. In South Korea, they actually built a huge stadium, a purpose-built stadium for esports. I doubt we have any of those across Africa. Of course, some of them can be uh, can be customized for this purpose. But investments start coming into place. People start taking position. Uh, teams, players, team management, professionals, uh, education, training, all of these things are all part and parcel of the value chain. And these two have their independent rules. Of course, they are complementary, but there is no basis for one to be a threat to another. Uh, so in a nutshell, the esports, regulating esports is pretty simple. First of all, we need to look at it like any other sport. And certainly, we also will need to look at how the global um, Olympic body treats esports. For example, in certain places, um, esports is expected to have a component of physical uh, exercise. In some, that is not, uh, is, is not considered. Uh, part of the press conference or press release by the Olympic Committee uh, earlier in the year was to say that some of the games that will most likely be allowed at the Olympics must be um, they, they must be uh, complementary to the traditional sports, and so that that means is that football, uh, Formula One, and all those other games that already have a traditional angle to them are the only ones that are, are qualified to uh, participate in the Olympic Games. So esports is a huge industry. Uh, all the youth, especially in Africa, are digital natives. There will be some infrastructural deficit, but creating the enable environment is what government needs to do. Putting the laws in place, sending a strong message, body language, and of course, if possible, putting together a policy. Uh, the role that the government needs to play, like it has played in soccer, across the length and breadth of, uh, global, the length and breadth of sports globally, and with that in place, we can see a private sector uh, playing their own role in this huge industry with massive potential.